For our latest Into the Wild segment, we're talking about hand standing rabbits. What? That's right. <laughs> or uh, Satya da Fond rabbits, as they are officially called. And I mean, no, it's not a joke. I know Easter's long gone, but we are talking <laughs> about that today. In fact, a recent international study solved the mystery of why the animals have their particular gait. And then we've got a very, very, very important person to chat to you about exactly what is going on. We have Leif Anderson, a co-author of the study, joins us to tell us a bit more. Leif, welcome to Expresso. Thank you very much. We've had our interest peaked already on the handstand. Uh, Darfour rabbits walk on their front legs. I suppose the most obvious question I have to ask first is why do they do this? Yes, that is because they have a carry specific mutation that leads to a defect in their spinal cord function. So what these rabbits, they can't really coordinate their forelegs and the hind legs. So when they're going to move a little bit faster, they, they prefer to go on the front legs to move faster, basically. So it's a defect in their ability to coordinate their, their limbs. It must be quite an entertaining spectacle to watch these <laughs> yeah. rabbits in action. And I understand that Satida 4 rabbits were only discovered in 1935. What drew you to this research and wanting to understand more? So, you know, what was established very early, you know, what you could say is that we learned about genetics in the beginning of the 1900s. So then you could do breeding experiment and what they could do at that time was to identify that this must be caused by a single gene. But they of course had no idea which gene that was. And some years ago we were involved in, in the characterization of the whole genome of the rabbit. And then we wanted to know. So this is like a model to understand how is the spinal cord functioning. And this has led to new insight by finding exactly which gene is the effect in these rabbits. Maybe you can expand on that and, and let us know what's happening within that spinal cord and the connection to the brain that doesn't yeah. allow these bunnies to hop or jump like, like yeah, other rabbits. Yeah. The spinal cord is full of neurons that is sing singling from the brain out to the limbs. So the Spinal cord neurons connect to the muscles, so we contract in a, in a coordinated fashion. So every time you walk or run, spinal cord neurons is working to really have this perfect coordination of how our limbs move. Same thing in rabbits or in birds or in fish as well. So, so these rabbits has a defect in, in a specific set of neurons. And so this work has led us to increase the knowledge about how the spinal cord function in the normal situation and why they don't work in these rabbits. It is fascinating, it is interesting, and I know there's a lot more for us to get through to understand Satuda Fon rabbits. So do stay with us, we've got more nature talk coming up. Uh, and this when it comes to this outstanding and handstanding rabbits, <laughs> you're gonna learn a bit more as we come back a little later. <laughs> it's my feel good this morning, we are talking about the wonders of nature that keep us wondering. This morning, uh, for our Into the Wild segment, um, one of these wonders that we are trying to understand are hand-standing rabbits. They run on their front legs. <laughs> Satyr de Fon, rabbits, as they are officially called, and Leif Anderson, a co-author of a study, one of the most comprehensive studies on these animals, now joins us again. Leif, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, really bizarre trait in nature. And we've got a little bit of background as to why yeah. they do this and, and what leads to it in terms of that, that spinal defect. But I want to know where exactly are they found? Are they prevalent all over the world? Are they found in one specific area? You know, this is a special, you could say, animal uh, or laboratory strain of rabbits. So they've been maintained as a model to study spinal cord function. So you, you don't find them in pet shops or anything okay. like that. So it's, it's, a, it's a laboratory model. So you, you can't go and order one or buy one from a pet <laughs> store. <laughs> But you know, you know, it's interesting because what researchers have been doing since the early 1900s is to collect this type of mutants because they give us a possibility to research and understand 
how, how the body works, basically. So the, uh, a mammal has about 20,000 genes, and, and for many of these genes, we still don't know exactly which function they have. And by studying this type of animal models, we, we learn more and more about different genes and how, for instance, in this case, how the spinal cord works. So just looking at the development of these uh, Satyada 4 rabbits, when did they start hopping on the front legs? And uh, I'm assuming, could this be from birth, or is it developed over time as well, the animal I mean, matures? You know, what's important is that you know this hopping that the rabbit is doing is the is the rapid movement of of, of the rabbit. So that is when they're going to run away from a fox or something like that, and they re really need this high speed. Uh, movement and and when, at the time of the development when they start to move around more that is when they start to learn this technique to walk on the four legs and i'm sure it both confuses <laughs> and frustrates the fox that's that's giving chase <laughs> yeah what i would like to say is that you know this is something which will never survive in nature you know this if this mutation occur in nature this Rabbits are gone, basically. I, I think what yeah. you've alluded to, the most exciting part of this study and this research is what it can lead to in terms of our understanding of genes and where we, we can take this research. What are some of the most exciting prospects of your study and the research as it applies to our understanding of spinal cord function? What are you most excited about where this information and this, this study can lead to? I, I think it's really fascinating to understand how different animals are coordinating. So each species have their own program, basically. And for, for making these different types of movements, so, so we, you know, we go from slow movement to fast movement. So you could think about you're walking and then you're running. And if you just, I, I'm always fascinated by watching people walking in a city, for instance, because you could see how well we are coordinating, we swing our arms in coordination with our, how we move our legs. And in particular, when we are running, you really, to be a fast runner, you need to really coordinate your arms with your legs. And, and this type of research leads us to understanding how that can be accomplished by a number of neurons in the spinal cord. Absolutely wow. fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for taking the time out to explain this, this anomaly, yes, but also excite us about where science is moving. We really appreciate your time this morning. And I've got to say, I think you have a, a very interesting and fun job. So enjoy this, <laughs> this completely yeah. unusual, but I'm sure very, very rewarding field of study. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, there's no denying that Satida Fon rabbits are only, I mean, they're nice to say, but they are very, very intriguing. So massive thanks to Lee for sharing uh, his knowledge with us. And I hope you've learned something absolutely incredible. And I know you want them for your kids, but unfortunately, they're not going to be found in the Can't wild. But it's intriguing. We are into the wild, finding out new things and giving them right here on Expresso and S3.